Developing countries depend heavily on trade in basic agricultural goods. This trade is subject to frequent fluctuations and falling commodity prices. The impact on producers and the countries concerned is, of course, very negative. In 2004, the European Commission developed an action plan to help ACP countries bear the burden. Some years later, the All ACP Agricultural Commodities Program, or 3 ACP Program, was launched. It is the continuation of a drive to provide support for certain sectors facing difficulties. The management and coordination of the program were left in the hands of a team of specialists who are now in a position to provide an initial evaluation. In 2007, the European Union and the group of ACP states decided to tackle on a long-term basis problems confronting uh, agricultural producers of uh, ACP countries. So they decided to launch this All ACP Agricultural Commodities Programme with a budget of 45 million euros. This programme is as much about dealing with problems of uh, primary commodity products, agricultural products, as about the implementation of technical assistance along the lines of the Paris Declaration. Concerning the results, they are in line with the objectives set and I think they are quite uh, encouraging, but obviously it is up to the experts in the field and uh, to the beneficiaries themselves to share with us uh, their feeling about the results. A dozen agricultural sectors, selected because of their human and economic impact in the ACP countries, were incorporated in this wide-reaching program of reorganization. The aim is to enable all the actors to develop their own sector-based strategies and to oversee their sustainable implementation. The program is also responsible for training ACP partners in the use of risk management instruments devised in accordance with market requirements. Implementation in the field will be handled by the various partner institutions, the World Bank, the ITC, UNCTAD, the CFC and FAO. The innovative feature of this program is that it has brought together the five partner international organizations on the basis of their complementary competencies, and these were honest for the benefit of the ACP countries. Secondly, on the basis of sectoral strategies developed by stakeholders themselves, we've offered a package of intervention to address the identified problems. I can say that each partner organization has contributed to the final objective of the program, which is to reduce poverty in our rural areas. This film is an inquiry into the actual results of the program four years after its launch, the relevance of the procedures in place, the effectiveness of plans of action. The economic and social consequences are among the criteria that make it possible to obtain a clearer picture of the need to continue such a program. Our journalists tell three stories, cotton, cassava and coffee. Since the mid-90s, the coffee sector has been going through a prolonged economic crisis, with plummeting commodity prices provoked by unprecedented overproduction. 25 million small-scale producers worldwide have struggled to make ends meet. The widespread decrease in earnings has driven numerous companies to bankruptcy, leaving populations mired in poverty. Producer countries in Africa and in the Caribbean have been widely affected by the crisis. Cameroon is among the worst hit. In a bid to relaunch the country's production, a partnership between the private sector and the government has been set up. The results are very encouraging. Cameroon. Since 2006, prices have been improving in Cameroon. We have established a strategy to relaunch the coffee sector with help from the International Trade Center and funding from the European Union. Given the volume of coffee we produce, we decided that it would be better to opt for a top-of-the-range product. Cameroon coffee is highly prized, but there is the problem of quantity. We need to increase output and improve quality to give the buyers and roasters the guarantees they need. An objective that was reached thanks to a series of original and effective initiatives. 
These included the development of a sector-based strategy, with support from the ITC, a workshop to evaluate the viability of an UNCTAD-backed stock exchange, a World Bank study into the feasibility of developing top-of-the-range coffees, and pilot projects to test new production technologies, along with training for producers in agricultural techniques. Here in southwest Cameroon they grow Robusta coffee. In Wambong, at the foothills of the Bakossi Mountains on fertile volcanic land, the Chede Cooperative is one of the country's four new pilot washing stations. They are using a new technique known as eco-depulping. With this method there is no longer any need to ferment the coffee, which means that 20% less water is used. As in the other stations, the initial results seem to be very reassuring. This new technology is also a bonus for producers. The latest harvest was sold for 30% more than traditionally dried coffee. For our producers, this is a key factor and proves that the project has really succeeded. And it is a first for Cameroon. The washed Robusta technique is providing added value with specific organoleptic characteristics that are proving popular with buyers of quality coffee. You could think it was an Arabica. It really is an excellent coffee. Excellent. But it costs money to produce quality coffee, and producers have joined forces to obtain bank loans that had always been refused to them up until now. We thought of setting up a community exchange to establish basic prices. This would be initially based on warehouse receipts. In other words, the coffee that belonged to the producer acts as a collateral with the banks to obtain loans. Buoyed up by this success, the Cameroonians recently shared their expertise and know-how with their neighbors in Congo, Kinshasa where the program resulted in the implementation of a national strategy for the coffee sector. East African producers also benefited from the European program. The objective was to reinforce the technical and human resources for the certification and verification of coffee production in the nine states in the East African Fine Coffee Association. With 50% of funding from the CFC, small holding farmers were able to attend courses to get a better understanding of the market's needs and demands. One such subject was a study of production conformity with standards required for premium coffee on international markets. Through the certified coffees, access to markets will be guaranteed and uh, buyers will be confident to buy the coffee, bearing in mind that Maybe labor wasn't abused, uh, maybe farmers weren't uh, underpaid, maybe the environment wasn't uh, affected. So from that angle, we see that the impact will, be, uh, will result in the uh, accessibility to, 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 to the markets. The project, the way it is structured, is uh, brilliant in that it enables uh, the good farmers and the good traders to move to the next level of selling even better quantity and the better quality of coffees to the international market. And number two, uh, we are confident that we will meet and surpass all the targets uh, in, in terms of market access that we are setting up. It is a, a unique opportunity actually for the uh, international community uh, to, to interact with the farmers in Africa and make sure that the benefit goes down to the farmers themselves. At the end of the day, 145,000 growers in East Africa and 6,000 executives from coffee institutions will have benefited from the training sessions. With global coffee consumption up by 2% in the past five or six years, coffee producers from ACP nations clearly have a lot to gain from positioning themselves on an added value market. Easier to grow than corn, cassava has become the staple food for almost a billion people worldwide. Over 200 million Africans, more than 25% of the population, make their highly nutritious dishes from this root crop. We make fritters. 
More recently, the plant is increasingly sought after, for another reason by a booming industry, the production of ethanol, glucose, starch and flour. Yet despite growing demand and its production potential, cassava is still the poor relative. Cultivated for the most part by small farmers, cut off from mass markets and agro-industries. This is a paradoxical situation and one that the 3 ACP program aims to rectify. In Cameroon, we are, have helped the cassava sector to update its strategy. We have then uh, also contributed to develop and implement a package of intervention addressing mainly the transformation and commercialization of the product. One example is this processing project co-financed by the World Bank. Among other developments, the system makes it possible to partially replace corn flour used to make bread, which is imported, by cassava flour, which is significantly cheaper. This is one of the processing possibilities, currently being evaluated by specialists from the World Bank. These new techniques will certainly give the produce greater added value and will in turn help boost earnings for many women, as Mrs. Manjung explains. We refer to cassava as coca for women, as women do 90% of the cultivation. The 500 women in our cooperative are no longer as poor as they used to be. Their living conditions have improved considerably and will keep on improving because we're moving on to the next phase. If they cultivated one hectare before, they will now cultivate three. The local modification of the flash dryer, a dryer washer peeler, is the keystone of this pilot project and will help develop the area's engineering sector. The total cost of aiding the sector is estimated at around 600,000 euros. We have to make the move from an artisanal activity to a semi-industrial one. The flash dryer is a vital tool. Our aim is to set up a prototype. I'm working with someone from Nigeria, where production is more large-scale, to adapt the machine to suit our local production. Specifically adapted for processing cassava, the flash dryer also makes it possible to recycle the remains of the plant for animal fodder once the starch has been extracted. In Zambia, cassava production jumped from over 800,000 to 4.7 million tons over a 10-year period. And there is more than the alimentary outcome at stake. The industrial exploitation of cassava is booming across the entire sub-region. The aim of the 3 ACP program, in partnership with Comesa, is the professionalization of the sector and, in the long run, better economic integration in the regional market for all of the industry's players. Farmers have changed the agronomic aspect, how to uh, produce cassava. And they're using smaller amounts and ridges, and that has tremendously increased on um, the quantity of what is planted per hectare. Knowledge has been imparted into these farmers and they know how to produce good cassava. And the most important thing is how now do we appreciate their effort by linking them to good markets. Over 5,000 farmers and several producer associations situated in the central provinces and Luapala have benefited from targeted training. These courses are designed to improve their agricultural techniques and familiarity with the markets. The results have been surprising. The importance of the training is really to um, uh, improve the capacity of most of these uh, organizations so that they're able to operate as viable and profitable business enterprises. The training focused on subjects ranging from uh, enterprise development, uh, formulating business plans, uh, logistics management, contract negotiations and uh, basically contracts, uh, as, as well as uh, marketing and group marketing. Co-founder of an agricultural cooperative with 32 members, including 10 women, this cassava grower attended a comprehensive training course in agronomy and management. We know what we have spent on production and then what percentage can we put as the a small profit. You know, after we know all the costs, including transport, we have the packages. After these trainings, now we knew exactly how to go about with our business.
pooling profits derived from improved management of their respective plantations, the 32 associated cassava growers have been able to obtain funding to build offices for the cooperative and to purchase these two machines. Last year, they managed to produce five tons of top quality cassava flour. As well as offering training in agricultural techniques and management, the three ACP program and its educational aspects have led to a clear change of mentalities among the beneficiaries themselves, as well as a growing awareness of the issues at stake. Donald Kalungushi now sells his cassava flour and starch to the Zambezi paper mills, unit packaging and wood processing, three of the main industries using cassava in the region. When we refer to African cotton, we often talk of it as the continent's white gold. If only it were as stable as gold. It is at the mercy of roller coaster market rates, like most raw materials quoted on international commodity markets. Furthermore, these fluctuations have serious repercussions for economies and employment for producers in the South. Here again, the 3 ACP program is backing the cotton sector in the four main production regions, namely Western Africa, Central Africa, and Eastern and Southern Africa. Several priority interventions have been financed in consultation with actors in the sector. These include the development of regional cotton strategies and training in risk management to help cope with fluctuating cotton prices. This support to the cotton sector is an integral part of the EU-Africa Partnership on Cotton, launched in 2004. In Benin, Burkina Faso and Mali, the FAO, one of the program's partners, upscaled its integrated production and pests management approach as from 2007. The aim is to improve the quality and yield of cotton seed. Farmers' field schools have been set up to provide cotton growers with training to use better agricultural methods that benefit both their health and the environment. In one field school in Blar in southern Mali, smallholders learn about plant growth, the detection and identification of pests, and useful insects for a more judicious use of pesticides. We meet up each week to monitor the plant's development. We observe the insects to see those that are natural enemies, the pests. We've increased production by over 30%. It is also a giant step for human and animal health, as we are using less pesticides. In less than four years, 16,000 Malian producers have received training. With cotton prices rising, there are more and more requests for training. Production costs are already coming down, thanks to the use of biopesticides such as neem leaves. People are encouraged by the high price for cotton and the growing demand, but we cannot keep up with demand and that's why we need to train as many agents as possible so they can, in turn, pass on what they've been taught to as many producers as possible. Another project with a budget of 5 million euros and co-financed by the CFC has been set up to tackle the problem of contamination of cottonseed. The World Bank and the ITC are also involved in its implementation. This collaboration has enabled all of the actors from producers to transporters and ginners to familiarize themselves with the techniques required to obtain uncontaminated and better quality cotton. <laughs> Barra 
Bawakanto kor la nchowe na ante fincha ma dola mi ya chenfe. Bawakanto mi fa na. In the three countries concerned, the training objectives have already been reached and breached. Plus d'ambition que we have done better than we expected in our second year. We were aiming for 3,000 producers per country per year, but we already have 18,000 new producers who will be shown techniques to prevent the contamination of cotton. Tests carried out in the field are very encouraging, and new opportunities seem to be opening up. In the case of Mali, the entire sector had a grade rating of 81%, whereas the cotton from the 3,000 producers had a grade rating of 88%. With help from the International Trade Center, we brought over 17,000 owners from Asia, 12 from Vietnam and 5 from Bangladesh. They really appreciated the efforts made by our producers and asked us to give them the cotton produced in the first year's harvest so they could test it themselves. To comply with the quality standards of the cotton market and strengthen their position worldwide, African cotton producing countries must adopt an international system for quality evaluation. The 3ACP program with co-funding from CFC and under the supervision of the International Cotton Advisory Committee has introduced a system of instrument testing to measure the quality of cotton fibers which could be used in all cotton producing countries. In a similar vein, two regional technical centers have been set up in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania and Segu in Mali. They are now operational. These centers are indispensable in order to ensure that raw material respects international norms when tested for quality. The aim of the project is to harmonize the various laboratories in the sub-region, Central Africa and Eastern Africa. This will help us get a clearer picture of our cotton production and help us classify our cotton more accurately and sell it more competitively on international markets. Cotton from the production areas of the project for the prevention of cotton seed contamination arrives here at the Certifex Technical Center in Segu, where it is tested to establish its degree of contamination. The director of Certifex is confident that the center has a vital part to play. Grâce à la création de ce centre technique régional, nous avons pu Thanks to the creation of this regional technical center, we have been able to train cotton sector workers, notably the quality controllers from various cotton companies, how to apply the integrated measurement system. The cotton testers from the 10 countries in West and Central Africa, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Mali, Chad and Senegal, were all trained here and can now apply the integrated measurements to determine the main characteristics of the cotton fiber. Most of the cotton sold by African countries is classified manually. This sometimes leads to complaints being made after transactions with adverse impact on the trade in African cotton fiber. It is now increasingly common to use instrumental testing and classification of cotton. If Africa is to remain competitive, it has little choice but to adapt and master the new technology. The White Revolution is underway. The 3 ACP program has contributed positively towards promoting modernization of the African cotton industry. Restructuration of the sector will require even greater efforts and will take time. But these efforts are necessary to keep up with competitors such as India, Turkey and the United States. After four years of implementation, a consensus has emerged. The program has achieved commendable results. This field survey suggests that the approach taken is viable, effective and sustainable. It has also encouraged participation by stakeholders and facilitated coordination between technical and financial partners. Support provided was seen to be relevant to the priorities of the beneficiary regions and countries. It cannot, however, stop there. The producers, the processors, the consumers, the small the farmers have been involved in this program. So it's important that uh, the European Union and other uh, cooperating partners come on board to support uh, similar initiatives in our region and of course in, in other parts of Africa because you can immediately see the results. In other words, by demonstrating that the problems facing ACP farmers, which were related to structural issues as well as the current economic climate, can be overcome, 
the 3ACP program has opened new doors and suggests promising new opportunities. In a context of intense global competition, no development partner would take the risk of abandoning the continuation of the successful measures initiated by the European Union over the past four years. It is now up to the partners to follow suit.